Thank you. Uh, welcome to the presentation about uh, QWC2. My name is Sandro Mani. I work at Source for a company in Zurich. Uh, we are QGIS developers. Uh, we developed a QGIS web client. We develop uh, the QGIS cloud, uh, spatial data infrastructure. Um, today, I'm going to uh, give you an introduction about QWC2 and QWC2 services. Uh, show you, let's say, the main features of uh, the client and, and tell you what has been happening in the project in the past uh, year or so. So QWC2 is the official web client of uh, QGIS. It was first published in 2016 with the goal of providing a modern, responsive user interface, plugin architecture which is easily extensible, and using state-of-the-art technologies like React and OpenAir 7. Uh, this is how it looks like. So it's uh, scalable, can be used both on desktop and mobile devices, such as a map, uh, menu, layer trees. The core features, uh, it provides a scene switcher, a layer tree, you can query features, feature info, you can search uh, with customizable search providers, you can measure, you can sketch on the map, you can create permalinks and share them, you can enable geolocation, uh, the browser, or say the GPS geolocation, you can print to PDF, you can compare maps, you can import external maps, and then there is an API for interacting with external applications. Uh, at its core, uh, QWC2 can act as a simple uh, WMS client on top of QG server. The goal is basically uh, you have a QG server which reads a QGIS project, which you configure as you wish with all the layer styles and print templates, and the, the web client will uh, display it uh, in the browser. This, uh, let's say, um, this uh, variant, it's a simple static JavaScript uh, uh, HTML CSS application which you can deploy in a web server and it's limited to the functionality which QG Server provides uh, through its WMS interface. Uh, QWC Services, on the other hand, uh, is an entire collection of microservices which is designed for extending uh, what uh, QGIS Web Client can do. Uh, it's mostly a collection of ASCA services which communicate uh, between uh, themselves via HTTP REST. And you can deploy them easily as a Docker containers, and there is a demo setup uh, available at QWC Docker, which uh, is ready, let's say, to uh, use. Or you can also uh, deploy it uh, with a customized uh, deployment uh, via Apache mod VSGI, for example. The uh, functionalities which become available when using QWC services is that you can have users and resources and give permissions. You can have multi tenancies so uh, have to say multiple clients hosted on the same system. You've got authentication. You can have full text search on the data of the QGIS project. You can edit the layers directly in uh, the web client. You can have compact permalinks, so like the short hash, which then gets resolved to a full viewer state, which is stored in a database. You can compute height profiles. You can have customized feature info templates. You can create uh, reports uh, through Jasper, and you can have a, let's say, um, map um, context uh, pop-up, which gives you additional information at the specified position. And the architecture is a bit more complicated than what we saw before. Before, we just had like uh, the small, uh, this part here, the QGIS project, QGIS server, and the web client. Now we have a uh, config database with uh, users and permissions. We've got administration uh, user interface to manage these users and permissions. And uh, we have an input configuration, then a config generator, we can also call it aggregator, which uh, collects all this information from all these sources into static configuration files, which then are read by these QWC services, and then uh, the web client interacts through these QWC services. So what are these QWC services? Some examples, um, let's say the core services uh, on which the entire uh, application lies. Is, uh, the first one is the, is the RWC service, uh, sorry, ERGC service, which basically will act as a proxy between the QG server and the web client, enforcing all the permissions based on the uh, permissions you configure in the admin GUI. You've got the map viewer, uh, QG map viewer, which basically ships uh, viewer configuration also uh, with uh, the enforced permissions based on what you've configured in admin GUI. Then the admin GUI, which uh, is the backend for managing these resources and users. 
and then the config generator, uh, this um, say configuration aggregator, which we talked about before. Additional services, we've got a data service which will allow you to interact directly with the geodatabase behind the QGIS projects to edit uh, features in the web client. The permalink service uh, for storing and resolving these compact permalink caches and the full text search service uh, to allow you to search directly on the um, geodata of the project. Uh, authentication is an important aspect. Um, the entire application is designed to be modular also in the aspect of authentication. The only requirement that such a service needs to provide is that it issues JWT token, tokens, and the authentication method itself can be, uh, let's say, very customizable. You can either authenticate against the database of users and passwords. You can use LDAP authentication and others like Kerberos and so on. The entire KWC ecosystem is designed to run with Docker. The big advantage is you have like one service for a container. Uh, the individual containers are, let's say, a controlled environment. You don't need to worry about dependencies and anything like that. That's provided for you inside of the Docker image. They're easy to create and manage. You can just update them by updating a version tag, and they're distributed over the Docker Hub registry. And then the more advanced setup uh, is the uh, you can use Kubernetes to automatically deploy and manage these containers. So, uh, so far a lot of text. I'd like to show some images what uh, actually the application looks like. Uh, first of all, we've got a theme switcher. So the basic concept of theme is basically a published QGIS project. You can have small thumbnails and you can basically like switch through the various projects that are published. We've got a layer tree, which allows you to uh, toggle the visibility, transparency, reorder layers. You can also import external layers. You can compare the layer, and then there's a background layer switcher. Uh, feature info and map info. So feature info is basically WMS get feature info, which will display the feature picked at the position in a table. You can also uh, create customized uh, templates to display them in a more sophisticated way. And then the map info is basically if you right click on the map, you'll get a small pop-up with position, elevation, and uh, additional information which you can configure manually, uh, say for the service. In this case, the uh, sector, the commune will be displayed. Search, uh, the say, search function generically allows you to get uh, results for places, layers, maps, and themes. Uh, you can implement your own search function through JavaScript to uh, interact with any search provider you, you wish, or you can also use the full text search service to search on the data uh, of the QGIS project. Printing, uh, the concept is that you just uh, create your print temp or print layout in QGIS, and then uh, thanks to the QGIS server get print function, you can uh, so you have a PDF created with, based on this, on this template in the web client. Redlining and measure uh, to, let's say, client-side functions. Redlining allows you to uh, create the drawings on the map, uh, various shapes, labels, colors, as you please. You can export them to uh, KML. You can, um, yeah transform, rotate figures, and measure. Uh, you can measure points, areas, lines, and if you measure a line, you can also get a high profile if you have an elevation data set uh, placed uh, in the background. Editing is a very powerful functionality. Uh, it relies on the configuration uh, you define in the QGIS project. So here we see basically the form, how it looks like in QGIS. This one is then translated to the web application in a very similar fashion. Um, it supports the auto-generated forms, it supports the drag and drop forms, or it can also provide the manual uh, Qt designer form, which also gets translated to the web client and displayed. Uh, it supports file uploads, it supports key value relations, and also one-to-end relations, as are configured in the QGIS project. Then, as a separate editing functionality, there's the attributes table, which allows you also to view and uh, edit uh, geometry-less data sets. The admin backend uh, uh, allows you to manage users, groups, and uh, roles and permissions. Basically, it's a very fine-grained uh, permission system. You can separately um, create uh, 
permissions for maps, single attributes, layers, data sets, which are editable or not. All right. So what's been happening in the project uh, in the past year or so? Uh, the first exciting functionality we've added is routing functionality. It's based on Valhalla. It allows you to uh, compute uh, routes between uh, two or more points uh, using various uh, transport modes, car, uh, multimodal, uh, public transport, um, bike, uh, or walk, based on what is configured and provided by Valhalla. And then there's a reachability, uh, so other Crohn's uh, functionality, which basically tells you from this point how far I can get in a certain amount of time. And uh, this functionality is also configurable to use a different um, routing backend uh, as opposed to Valhalla. You just uh, need to implement a uh, interface uh, function in the web client. Another function we've added is the integration of Cyclomedia, or let's say this can also serve as a basis for other panorama viewers. Um, the say, goal is to have like this street view kind of uh, uh, pictures integrated into the web client, and then there's a synchronization uh, where you see in the 2D view basically what is being looked at in the panorama viewer, and uh, on the other, let's say, also reverse, the two windows are synchronized. We've improved the printing function to also uh, allow for Atlas printing, so you can configure the print layout in QGIS for Atlas printing, and then you can select multiple features in the web client, and then you'll get a printed Atlas for all the selected features. And a very new function, um, which uh, is only available since uh, QGIS 3.32, is uh, GeoPDF printing, which will then be available as a switch in the print dialog. We've uh, greatly expanded the redlining functionality to include uh, new shapes, uh, rectangles, squares, ellipses. We've added transform tools to scale and rotate the figures. You can now also uh, display measurement labels directly in the uh, measured uh, or in the, in the drawings, as opposed to having them in the measure tool only. We've added a numeric input uh, widget, uh, which allows you to numerically enter the coordinates of the geometry, and we've added an export functionality to export the drawings to KML and GeoJSON. We've added some smaller plugins uh, or enhanced uh, existing ones. Uh, the raster export to plugin uh, now allows you to uh, configure fixed size uh, frames, basically. And then there's a new news pop-up plugin, which is uh, useful for presenting certain information to the user on the first uh, start, which uh, yeah, could be any kind of uh, news, update, or whatever information. Um, we have did some work on accessibility. First of all, you can create custom color schemes uh, solely as the CSS variables. In this case, we see a high contrast. Um, color scheme, but it can be anything you desire. It's like a set of 15 CSS variables, which controls the entire color scheme of the application. And then we've uh, implemented support for hotkeys, which you can uh, configure in the configuration file for uh, launching tasks in the viewer and so on. Uh, staying in the configuration aspect, uh, we've simplified the viewer configuration. Those of you who maybe already used uh, GitHub's in the past know that uh, before you had a separate section for the mobile and for the desktop um, viewer, now you can uh, define a common section with all, let's say, the common configuration, then just selectively override what you want to be different in the separate viewers. It, uh, this saves a lot of, say, space, lines of code, and many mistakes. And uh, a bit more advanced, but uh, also very useful if you run a multi-tenant environment. Uh, you can now define a tenant config template, which basically uses this dollar tenant dollar variable as a placeholder, and then just can reference uh, this file from the tenants instead of replicating the entire configuration. Many times have just one base configuration and selectively extend or override what you need in the actual tenant config. Um, for maintenance and uh, managing, it's very interesting. We've introduced a long-term release uh, from this year, tagged as 2023.123 LTS. 
this release is always managed or say maintained for one year. Um, and it will just be provided with the bug fixes based uh, on the issues uh, which are reported and uh, will be maintained until the end of the year. Next year we'll have the 2024 LTS. And the previous uh, versioning uh, format is still uh, available. So if you want to have the fresh newest version of the various services, you can still use the uh, year, month, day tag format. Um, something that maybe has been a bit lacking in the past is, uh, say, a bit of complete documentation. We've worked a lot on this in the past few months. So we've aggregated documentation from the various uh, repositories in a single page. You've got a general configuration uh, chap say, yeah, chapter with the main configuration files, and then you've got a new um, block of selected topics, which will just uh, walk you through how to achieve specific um, results in the client uh, in an easy to understand way. Some references, uh, the homepage and documentation is available at qwcservices.github.io. The main repositories is the QWC uh, demo application and the QWC doc repositories. And here are various uh, existing uh, viewers you can try out and see how various uh, users have configured their client and what functionalities they have exposed. <laughs> 